Hello and welcome to the worship service for the week of February 14th. Today is Transfiguration Sunday and it's also Valentine's Day. So throughout the service, you'll see symbols and reminders of God's love for us. As we begin our service, we invite you to light a candle if you have one nearby as a reminder and as a symbol of God's love and light in our lives. You'll also see the words to our opening prayer and we invite you to join us in that prayer. God, every week we come together in worship to celebrate your love for us and the love you call us to share. In this time, may we open our eyes and ears to find delight in you and hear your voice say, This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Amen. Today our prayer invites us into a time of reflection and confession, and it is based on the words of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let us pray. God of love, we confess we are sometimes impatient and often unkind. We are quick to envy and find subtle ways to boast. There are times we are rude and lift ourselves up as we put others down. Loving God, teach us to love. God of love, we confess that we are quickly angered. We are quick to record how often we've been wronged. There are times when we celebrate the misfortune of others. Loving God, teach us to love. God of love, we confess that we put ourselves first. We're reluctant to give. We are slow to sacrifice. There are times we hesitate to protect. Loving God, teach us to love. When we are tempted to judge, to assume the worst, may love remind us to trust. When we are tempted to despair, to assume all is lost, may love remind us to hope. When we are tempted to give up, to assume it will never happen. May love remind us to persevere. Loving God, teach us to love. Amen. Today's reading is taken from the Gospel according to Mark. We'll be reading from chapter 8, verses 34 through to chapter 9, verse 8. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And he said to them, Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, 
one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Teach me day by day, love's sweet lesson to obey. Sweeter lesson cannot be, loving God who first loved me. child's glad heart of love at thy bidding may I move prompt to serve and follow thee loving God who first loved me loving God who first loved me Teach me thus thy steps to trace, strong to follow in thy grace, learning how to love from thee, loving God who first loved me. Valentine's Day is a day that we can celebrate delight in our relationships, not just romantic ones, even though those are the relationships that are usually pushed this day. But I think back to the joy of Valentine's Day at school as a kid. We would make our special boxes and each student would bring a Valentine for everyone in the class, everyone. And then you would dump out your box and read through them all and see your name handwritten, not just by your closest friends, but by everyone. How delightful is that? Here at Grace a couple years ago, for Valentine's Day, we stuck red and pink hearts in our shoes so that every time we left the house, we were reminded that God loves us. I feel delight every time I put on my boots with the hearts in them. I have heart-shaped cookie cutters that I only take out on Valentine's Day. I don't know why, but it's a somewhat delightful thing. Valentine's Day is one of those days that even though its roots are in the remembrance of the saint and martyr Valentine, and as much as we can begrudge the over-commercialized holidays, it has lots of elements of delight in it. So since this Valentine's Day falls on this Sunday, we're trying to infuse this time with a bit of that delight, not to be silly, but to try cultivate some delight in our lives and to remember the delight that we are given through loving relationships with each other. And then, we have some real well-placed wonder with the story of Jesus' transfiguration lining up with Valentine's Day. And so today we are embracing the story that we hear every year with a lens of delight. If you have listened to other sermons or reflections on the transfiguration, and I preach some myself, there are great lengths taken to help us make sense of this fairly strange story. Jesus is bright and glowing, Elijah and Moses show up, the disciples are scared, God speaks, and then as quickly as it happened, it's over. 
And yes, there's so much jam-packed into this story, allusions to the Old Testament, images filled with lots of different meanings, and so much to explore. But really, ultimately, is a brilliant, glowing, holy figure supposed to make sense? That's what I find myself wondering this year on this day. How can we mark Jesus' transfiguration? How can we move through this story today without trying to do too much to explain away the wonder? First, the most obvious thing we are drawn to in this story is Jesus. In this moment of absolute, here I am, he is in dazzling white and so very visible to the eyes of the disciples who are with him. And of course, Jesus is the light we are supposed to be drawn to all the time someone we try to see and follow and appreciate. But in the transfiguration, there's a revealing of Jesus that seems far more eye-catching than a baby in a barn, or more revealing than a man being baptized by John. In Mark's version, it's not clear if the crowd gathered can hear God's voice and see the heavens open at Jesus' baptism. At the transfiguration, we celebrate that Jesus can actually be very visible and that as much as our journey following him may be made up of small glimpses where we're not sure what we're seeing, or stories passed on, or wondering where Jesus is, Jesus is present. The transfiguration is a not so subtle epiphany as we transition from Jesus' early life to Jesus' ministry that he will be noticed. The transfiguration was terrifying for those witnessing it. It's strange, wondrous, weird, beautiful. Fill in your own description for those of us witnessing it through the story today. But because of that, it doesn't mean that we need to stand before this story with reverent, still awe. This is a story and moment of delight, whether or not the disciples recognized it then. God says, this is my son whom I love. This is my child whom I love. I can't imagine God not saying that without some sort of smile, whatever that looks like. It's kind of fun to imagine. In the transfiguration, God is taking delight in God's own son, and in turn, we can delight with God in a dazzling image that just doesn't make sense to us. It's well-placed wonder. It's a tender moment. It's an intimate holiness as Jesus stands with Elijah and Moses and as God's voice speaks. Since it is Valentine's Day, let's use this as an image. What happens when we love someone, when we take delight in another person? It moves us to give of ourselves for that person. There are people in our lives for whom we live that way, giving of ourselves because of that love and delight we have. Whether it's family, friends, your children, your partner, when we take delight in someone else, it moves us to a love that is self-giving. God is that way for all of us. God loves us, so God acts for us, and in that action, God gives. So as we stand witnessing the transfiguration alongside God, hearing God speak and seeing Jesus in bright white, we should take delight and the delight we have moves us deeper into a love of God, Jesus, the Spirit, that manifests in our own self-giving, of taking up our cross, we might say, and following. God loves us, God acts for us, and in that action, God gives. We love Jesus, we act or try to act like Jesus, and in those actions, we give. Today, we'll take this image of brilliance or light and the delight God has for God's Son to affirm that Jesus is with us. This is what we carry with us as we walk into Lent in the coming week, so that as we move through a season of reflection on our own personal relationships with God, we are doing so with hope and confidence. Amen. Friends, I invite you into a time of prayer. Let us pray. God of life, God of love, you create us and set us in relationship with each other, in families and neighborhoods, communities and countries, cultures and nations. We give you thanks for all the supportive relationships which bring meaning and encouragement to our lives and have meant so much to us. Help us contribute what we can to sustain the well-being and care of our community as we grow in our understandings of being the church for one another and for our neighbors. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our faith and our future, 
There are so many pressures on homes and families today. Draw near to all who are struggling in economic difficulty and all burdened by challenges to health and a sense of peace. Be present with parents and children, married partners and next door neighbors who face conflict in their relationships. May your spirit move to create solutions that express mutual respect and resolve tension. Help us be creative in the work of supporting families, whatever their size or situation, as well as people living on their own, to know your love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God of mercy and forgiveness, you call us to live together in peace and unity. We pray for our neighborhoods and our nation where people are divided and bitterness turns into resentment. Show us how to work for reconciliation. As the pandemic stretches on, we pray for all those whose skill and dedication is needed to support our common life. Wherever we can, may we offer words of encouragement and appreciation so others know how much they matter to you and to us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today, we give thanks for our church family and for the years of worship and witness offered here. So much has changed for us over these past months. And we pray you will bless us as we think carefully and creatively about how to share the good news of grace and embody our values of engagement, belonging, community, compassion, and service, and live out Grace's vision of transforming lives through God's grace. We remember those of our number in need of your special attention today. Guide us all with your wisdom and insight so we find ways to reach out to each other in support and friendship. Open our eyes to opportunities to reach out beyond our own fellowship as agents of your healing and hope. For we offer ourselves to you in Jesus' name, in the words he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Bless you this week as you go and take delight in your relationship with God and delight in the relationships with those you love. And as you go, know that God always loves you, the peace of Jesus is with you, and the community of the Spirit is yours now and always. Amen. Continue to go to Grace's website to keep up to date on all that's happening here in the season of Lent and as we get closer to Ash Wednesday and Shrove Tuesday this week. There's also a donate button on our website and we're grateful for all the gifts that you are able to give. In a moment, you'll see the words to our closing prayer and we invite you to join us in that prayer and we hope to see you again soon. Bye. God, we leave this time together with eyes open. We have seen your son Jesus and now we follow him as he leads us down the mountain and out to ministry and to your people. Your love endures forever, guides us on this journey, and we are grateful. Amen.